abstract symbols is reshaping our view of animal intelligence and the nature of language. One of the creative features of language is that it enables the expression of ideas which may be quite unusual or bizarre. To demonstrate his comprehension of various grammatical constructions, Kanzi has given specially composed sentences involving a wide variety of objects. Okay, I'm going to put on my mask and we're going to try a, a sentence with Kanzi, okay? okay. Can, you, can you hear me, Kanzi? Give the doggy a shot. Some questions involve strange combinations of objects. Put the key in the refrigerator. Good job. Thank you. Very nice. Okay. Go get the ball that's outdoors. To do this, Kanzi has to ignore another ball which is indoors. Over a period of six months, the same tests were carried out in parallel on the daughter of one of Kanzi's researchers. Very nice. Thank All you. the trials were recorded on videotape and originally performed with Sue completely out of sight. Shoe? Could you take my shoe off, please? With some of the 600 sentences, Kanzi excelled. With others, the child did better. By and large, both were correct about three quarters of the time. The remarkable finding was that Kanzi's comprehension of language was on a par with the two and a half year old girls. For both, the ability to understand outstripped the ability to produce language. The girl because of her age, and Kanzi because the chimpanzee vocal tract does not allow it. It is in what an individual comprehends that we use as the basis for saying that individual is language competent. If they can't speak because of some anatomic reason, we don't say well, they don't have language. We say that they can't speak and they need some other kind of medium for that. Good. You want some milk? milk? I know, you always want some milk when you're planning to be good. Ever since Terrace's devastating conclusion that an ape couldn't create a sentence, most researchers have steered clear of looking for signs of ape grammar. But now Patricia Greenfield is taking this on. In my um, collaborations with Sue Savage Rumbaugh, I found very strong evidence that um, the bonobo is able to make combinations of symbols that are very, very creative. Keys. Matata. Good. Oh, you want a key to see Matata and you're going to be good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Oh, that's so nice. I knew that they were not only original sentences, but the very rules were his own invention because I also analyzed the communications of his human caregivers to him. Keys. You need a key? Need a key, huh? I have some keys right here. Root room. Keys. You want to open that, huh? I knew what the input was that he had been exposed to. And I found him using rules for combining symbols that his caregivers had never used. One such rule was that the lexigram comes first, the gesture combined with it comes second. M and M's, there. The researchers recorded on tape many examples, which Greenfield then analyzed. Here, Kanzi selects chase, apple, there. Another example yes. of the lexigram gesture rule. No. No. Usually we think of children not as inventing grammar, but as learning grammar, the grammar that is in the, the language they hear around them, like English grammar or French grammar or Spanish grammar. But here was Kanzi inventing some rules that were not in his environment. This creativity the capacity for rule invention is very significant. Dr. Greenfield believes the ability of these chimps to create rules of their own suggests that our hominid ancestors had developed a simple language long before they could speak. For language to arise, meaning must be shared through the use of common symbols. How could this have come about? 
One experiment showed that the enculturation process may cause important changes in the mind. It was a test of imitation. We found this at a hardware store, and we would uh, model for them that kind of action. It rolls around a bit, and then we would hand it to them and ask uh, them to do it as well. But one of the uh, important things was we also had another action to be done with this object uh, so that it wouldn't be uh, the case that they, we would hand it to them and they would do what naturally occurred to them, that we have two actions with the same object, so if they imitated them both, then it would mean that they were actually copying the action. So the other action was uh, a little piece of Play-Doh here and there to flatten it out this way. And so each subject from each of the groups was given both of these actions with this object. Another example might be um, <clears throat> this uh, chalk line, this carpenter's chalk line, where on the one hand we had them doing a very simple action of opening the place where the chalk goes and looking in, and um, on the other hand, a slightly more complex action, we would uh, pull out a toy on the end and have them reel it in. They tested the performance of Sue Savage Rumbo's chimps, those who had been exposed to language and those who had been reared by their chimp mothers. They found that the ones who had been enculturated managed to imitate with ease and performed as well as children. However, the non-enculturated chimps, like Kansas' mother Matata, were very poor imitators indeed. Certain groups of wild chimpanzees use stones to open nuts. Studies suggest that this may be a technique learned slowly by each generation. Kansi was shown this on TV and Sue suggested that he might want to try it for himself. Yes, A-frame. Kanji's gonna go to the A-frame. When Herb Terrace concluded that Nim was just imitating his trainer, he was implying that it's a very low-level ability. Experiments like these have shown that imitation, understanding the goal and achieving it by the same method as the demonstrator, is a very sophisticated skill. Kanzi is also showing insight and creativity in his approach to problem solving. He was given a demonstration of stone tool making by an archaeologist. He was presented with a puzzle box fitted with a strong rope to hold it closed. Kanzi quickly caught on to the solution and also found his own way of making stone tools by throwing rather than striking the flints together in his hands. His method was just as effective. It seems that chimp behavior changes dramatically when they are given the tools for abstract reasoning. Sarah Boyson has discovered a striking example of this. All right, here we go. We'll do another turn. All right, this time we'll put this many here. We'll put this many here. See, but which should we, oh, you want to pick these first. Okay, well, we'll have to give these six to Bobby. And Sheba gets three, and Bobby's happy. The animals are given a choice between two different amounts of candy. And the rule is simple. If you pick an amount, it goes to your partner. And you get the whatever's left over. That's it. That's the rule. Okay. One there. See, but which one's for Bob? Point. Oh, Bob gets two. Good. All right, there you go. So you get that one. So if you were, are aware of the rule, then in order to get the most, the first amount you should pick should be the smallest amount. Right, because then you get the biggest remainder. I'm going to put this many here, and this many here. What, what should we give away? Oh, we're going to give away these. All right, all right. Bob gets four. Sheba only gets two. They don't get it. They can't do it. They can't inhibit selecting the larger array immediately. And so even though they, it might be very distressing, as soon as they do it, they understand, oh, no, I did it again. She's going to get more than me. And as we explored further, it occurred to us to try and substitute the numbers of candies with numbers. Two for Bob. From the moment that occurred, the rules unfolded as you would expect. When we're either going to pick this one or this one, and give it to Bobby. We're going to pick two. Okay, we broke that. 
that up. And you could literally shift from trial to trial, numbers, candy, candy numbers, and her performance would go up and down. Well, how about if you could choose between this and this? Bob should get three? Okay. We'll give three to Bob. You're happy, aren't you? One, two, three for Bobby. And Sheila, you get six. The introduction of the numbers completely releases the animal from that very, very rigid automatic response of selecting more and allows them to use this cultural rule that we had established. It was quite extraordinary. To work with great apes, the researcher has to become a part of the group. More than that, he or she has to maintain mutual respect. Physically, humans are no match for chimpanzees. Some rules, like not jumping onto a person's head when they didn't ask you to, have to be enforced. Otherwise, working with adult apes would become impossible. Panzi and Panvanisha have had intensive bark. contact with humans Tumuli every day and have been shown to understand human speech. Tamuli, Tamuli, that's some bark. Thank you, Panvanisha. Tamuli. Young Tamuli, reared by her mother, shows no such comprehension of spoken Tumuli. English. Tamuli, could you slap Kanzi? Tamuli, you. Slap Kanzi. You slap Kanzi. You slap Kanzi. Tamuli, could you give Kanzi a hug? <laughs> Tamuli, could you groom Kanzi? He's asking you to groom him. Look, he put your hand up there. Isn't that nice? Go ahead, groom Kanzi. Look, he's showing you. Now more so than ever, the data are so strong that every reasonable scientist, every reasonable person should be willing to conclude that, yes, indeed, the chimpanzee does have not just the appearance of language, but does have the competence for language, particularly if it is reared from birth as though it is something it is not, namely, a human child. This work has upset many cherished beliefs about the preeminence of the human species over other animals, but it also places a new ethical burden on the science which produced it. The successful language experiments all started when the chimps were very young. But what happens next? They have uh, four rooms and five tunnels, and it could be deadly boring, but instead we try to make each day a unique, interesting day. These five chimps live in a social group on the third floor of the psychology building of Central Washington University. This is Washo, the chimp who 25 years ago learned sign language in Reno. She and the other gardener chimps still communicate with the researchers in sign language. During the day, they have uh, any manner of things to play with. They have buckets of Kool-Aid with hoses for straws. They can dip for yogurt. They have dress-up clothes. They have brushes, toothbrushes. You want what? You want... Ape language researchers now believe that once a chimp has become accustomed to a rich human environment, it would be a cruel deprivation to lose it. Chimpanzees can live for 50 years or more. These chimps will require continual human care and attention. They have a lunchtime meal that is served to them. They, if they would like some more, it's usually a, a vegetable kind of a soup that has protein in it. They ask for more soup, and then they're served more soup. Uh, we don't ever just throw bowls in. We don't necessarily spoon feed them. They are offered spoons and dishes and to eat. English is spoken here, but sign language still predominates between chimp and human. Debbie Fouts has published work describing the signing between the chimps when no one else is present. Other researchers have observed how signs are used to initiate conversations. 
Before she was brought here, Washoe had already given birth to two infants, neither of whom lived beyond a few weeks. The second baby died after being taken away from her for medical treatment. It was Roger Fout's job to make Washoe understand what had happened. Washoe didn't have the power of speech, but the power of language allowed them to communicate in an unprecedented way. I had to go back the next morning, and uh, she was very depressed, of course, and quite, quite, quite a alone, not signing with anybody. And so I went in, and she came up to me. Your eyes lit up. She came up to me, and she said, baby, holding, holding it. It was a question. She was saying, basically, where's my baby? And I had to tell her, I said, he's dead. He's finished. And with that, the baby sign literally dropped into her lap. Her head dropped, and she moved away into the corner and stopped signing. So we searched and searched and searched, and 10 days after his death, we finally found a replacement. It was Lewis. He was 10 months old. Um, the next morning, I went in, and I signed, have baby. And she immediately started signing, baby, baby, getting very excited. Baby, 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 baby. It's slapping her hands, bipedal, hair up, extreme excitement. And then when she signed, my baby, I knew we were in trouble. I, I knew she misunderstood me. But, so I went out and got him. 10 month old, he was on my chest, came in, and then went in the, uh, the enclosure with her. And uh, when I got about uh, maybe two or three feet away, she got a good look at him. She, all this time she's saying, baby, 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 and she gets a good look at him, and she just sits down. And then she looks back up, and then she signs, baby. Obviously, she would realized it wasn't her baby any longer. It was a strange baby. That night, she tried to sleep with him like her own baby. She always took her to bed with her and slept with her and so on and slept with him. She tried to do that with Lewis too, and he would have nothing to do with it. He, he lay down on his own end of the bench, and when she'd come, he'd move until finally she let him. And then at four in the morning, she woke up, went into a bipedal swagger, banged the enclosure and signed, come, hug, slapping her hands, making a loud noise. And with that, he jumped up out of a sound sleep and le leapt into the, uh, the, the nearest hairy arms that were available, which were hers, and she literally engulfed him and lay back down. And from that moment on, they were inseparable. Worship. Worship. Lulis was also an experiment in his own right. That's this. From the time he arrived, the humans deliberately restricted their signing to Washo to test whether or not Lulis would learn sign language without human intervention. By the time he was five years old, Lulis had learned a total of 51 signs. The Fouts regard this Lewis. as evidence of cultural transmission of language by chimpanzees. In May 1993, the chimps were finally moved into a new home. If you want good research, they have to have proper care. You owe them that at least. They're, they're not volunteers. They, they don't want to do this. We are forcing them into a situation where they, they shouldn't be. It's, it's, not, it's not where they would be. If you do that, then you have a moral obligation to make sure that their life is as rich and as full as it would be if they were not here. If chimpanzees have shown that they can acquire a system of human communication, invent their own rules and share them with others, and if the possession of symbols makes a fundamental difference to their behavior, then the likelihood is that chimp and human minds have a great deal more in common than we thought. The uses and, and misuses to which we put animals certainly have to do with lines that we draw differentiating ourselves from them. I'm certain that even within human populations, when we behave in a way that is not humanitarian, it is because we draw a distinction. If these people are not like me, they don't have the same rights. By drawing a continuity, I think we behave in a more human fashion to all concerned. The reason why this research has become so controversial is that it's part of a very long battle. Not the battle over whether human beings are descended from chimpanzees, but the battle over whether the same laws of nature apply to mice and leopards and chimpanzees and human beings. Most of the history of modern science has been a retreat from the notion of human speciality 
And people more or less have accepted this now about blood and bone, but behavior, emotion, cognition, that's very hard. You can see the history of science and of behavior as a slow retreating battle with separatists uh, drawing the wagons in its ever tightening circle. And right now, the last great stand seems to be made over language. If we take seriously the fact that a chimpanzee has an understanding of language and an ability to produce language, it raises all kinds of other questions. Are they conscious? How should we treat them? Are they rational? Should they have chimpanzee rights? Uh, and we're not prepared to answer all of these questions. We, we don't really know. A copy of the script is available by sending a cheque for £2 made payable to BSS to Horizon Chimp Talk, PO Box 7, London W3 6XJ. And the debate about the communication skills of talking apes continues in the June issue of the BBC Wildlife magazine. Well, following the news on BBC Wells on One in a moment, Panorama examines the crisis facing insurance giant Lloyds of London and its plans to avoid disaster. In the title.